Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, what are the golden rules of Java programming? So let's get into it. Well, I suppose that this question is in essence, all right, what are some important things to remember when you're doing Java programming? And I think I should, should be able to give you some insight into this. One of the first and main rules, I mean, these are important, but not in any particular order, is to keep it simple, stupid. Now, basically, one of the, and this is, I would say, just true in general for programming overall. It's a phenomenon that a lot of people have a hard time with, and that is that they complicate things unnecessarily. They you fall prey to that all-time favorite of whole engineers, which is that you feel like you're confident, you feel like you're trying to solve a problem, and you figure that, all right, how can I solve it? You start thinking, how do I solve this in the most efficient way possible when the situation doesn't actually require it, and then inevitably, inevitably, it starts, like, your solution starts to be about your solution rather than solving the problem it's very similar to uh, you see this especially in uh, like uh, junior programmers who have just slightly started to get the hang of programming they've advanced to the point where you know they're kind of doing the same thing again and now they want to improve their own technique and i mean that is a great desire it's just that very often it turns uh, turns into this attempt at either impressing a more senior developer with their amazing code or in trying to impress themselves and build something based on what a blogger somewhere on the internet has said when in reality they could have kept things much simpler and it's usually the mark of a more experienced programmer to write simpler code the right code, if you will. So that is one of the golden rules because you can, I can, I can promise you this: your code is going to get complicated. It it is inevitable that it's going to get complicated. I mean, guys, it's all but impossible to create a money-making application or a enterprise application without getting complicated code. The trick is, and that is the thing that a lot of juniors don't understand. You see all these techniques that you learn about and read about and hear about. Some of them are absolute garbage. I, I will tell you right off the bat, these are the brain children of people who have another use case or they themselves have fallen victim to this. So, you know, not everything that is, is like not everything that somebody tells you on a tech talk is good practice, but they will sell it as if it is. But the other part of it is that the people who really use this stuff to success are the people who understand the problem before they apply the solution. So that's one thing. Another thing is to try to follow like the solid principles, these sorts of things, because the fundamental thing is always complexity. <clears throat> it will always be complexity. It's the greatest idea. Doesn't yeah, honestly, this is kind of this kind of spans any programming language it doesn't really have to be java but complexity over time is the greatest is the greatest challenge of any it project because everything that you can possibly make at small scale is fairly trivial and a lot of the code and examples and posts in blogs and so forth that you will read about are from the perspective of a simple use case and that guys everything works at small scale Absolutely, there, there is very little that doesn't seem elegant or works at small scale, but unless you have the experience of working with a large code base, large project, tons of people of varying levels of interest in software development, and unless you have experience trying to align all these ducks in a row and getting all of the, these people to use your systems. I mean, it, that's something that I think is absolutely beautiful. There's tons of these, especially freelancers and bloggers who will show you advanced techniques of doing things and people get excited and like, and then the more experienced programmers can kind of look and see that, yeah, this is great. It's just that it's so complicated that it's very odds are that unless you somehow force everybody at your company to learn these techniques and really master them this is going to fall to shit in a few a few months which is exactly what happens i mean i will give you an example i love to use bem for css 
this is just an example. But the fundamental problem with BIM, and which is is hilarious, it's the dumbest reason in the world as to why it fails. I have a coworker or an old coworker talk to them about BIM. We had this discussion. They actually promote CSS modules simply because all of their coworkers are too lazy to actually write BIM correctly. So they need to sit in all the code reviews to just make sure that they follow these practices. And in, in but in order to solve that problem, they literally had had to add CSS modules because that just magically takes care of it so that people who can't be bothered to use a naming convention can just write whatever they want and then this, the build pipeline takes care of it for them. You can't fight something like that. There's no way for you to have a genius solution to such a problem. Like if people don't care, they don't care and there's nothing you can really do about that. So. Number one, make sure that you keep it simple. So, um, and apart from that, I would say that you're, well, you're pretty much set in terms of like the most important rule. The other rules I would say is that you need to consider other people on the project. Keep your dependencies as small as possible. The closer that you can align yourself to the Java standard, the better, because uh, this is just a bit of personal experience but in general people who work within Java and the Java community like the I mean the, the standard libraries the closer that you can tie yourself to those the better because let's be honest here no one really like no one picks Java as a language because it's trendy or sexy or has all these amazing open source projects where you pick it because it's stable and and the closer you can align yourself to that, the more likely that you are to be able to hook into programmers who, because most of the developers who work within Java, like they they tie their, they are fairly close to the native libraries, and the closer that you can keep yourself to that, the better you're going to be able to keep people fairly productive very quickly, because that's the that's one of the strengths of Java. You have a lot of people who know the standard libraries and who have a good like a good understanding of that. And if you want people to get productive fairly quickly in Java, the closer you can be to those libraries, the better. The more customization and stuff like that, the worse it kind of gets because the more diversity you have, uh, you increase your odds of lessening people's productivity. So what I want you to take away from this is that number one, like the biggest golden rule is to keep it simple. That's number one. Number two is to try and use as much of the native libraries as possible. You can, of course, use Spring and other really famous frameworks if you really, really want to. But I think that overall, the closer that you can keep yourself to the standard and the simpler you can keep things, the more likely you are to succeed with the Java project. Have a great day.